Hi, today is August 10th and we are walking through the Bible answering the questions. Who am I? Who is God? And what the heck are we doing together? I want to remind you that you have identity because you are created in God's image, Genesis 127. And he said, I am, therefore you are. He's the capital letters and we're the lowercase letters. And most people don't think identity is, that's enough for identity. They're just, I am. They want to know uh, what their value is. And so we look to the Bible again and we see that Jesus Christ gave his life for every one of us. And that makes us priceless. The God, the father gave his son. And I don't know which was harder to give his own life or his son's life. And we are, um, we, we are walking in identity. I am and value priceless. That's what the Bible says. And if you doubt the Bible, if you doubt creation, there are many, many apologetics that uh, will people who study, you know, why the Bible is true and why creation is true. One of them is the answers in Genesis. Lots of people have tried to disprove the Bible and the truth of God's word and have reverted to believing. August 10th, we're referring to Ezra chapter 10, 1 through 44, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 through 20, Psalm 31, 9 through 18, and Proverbs 21 and 3. Ezra, we're ending the book today, and in Ezra, he, when we left him yesterday, he was, he was just weeping, he was fasting, and he was crying out to God to forgive Israel. He stood in the place of Israel. He hadn't been there. He didn't do what they were doing. And sexually, they had joined themselves to pagan nations and by marrying the women of those nations. And God had said not to do that. Don't mix holy people with profane people, pagan people. And the people of Israel saw him weeping bitterly and they joined him and they said, we have been unfaithful to God, for we have married these pagan women of the land. And then in verse 4 of chapter 10, he said, Get up. Now this is the people of Israel. Get up, for it is your duty to tell us how to proceed in setting things straight. We are behind you, so be strong and take action. So Ezra, the man of God, the man who knew God's commands, was was compelled by the people of Israel to get up and set things straight. And I thought, Lord, how do I make things straight? And um, let us all pray, God, help us to make things straight. And the first thing I think we need to be um, agreeable to is for people to help us to, to point out what is wrong in our lives. That's what the prophets do. That's what the pastors and the people in our lives will say. Um, if they have humility, they will say, this is, this is what's wrong in your life. And if you have humility, you'll say, um, you know, you'll open your heart and your life to correction. Uh, and it's not easy. Correction's not easy, but I'd rather be corrected than rejected. I'd absolutely be, rather be corrected than wrong. So in verse 11, so Ezra said to the people of Israel, so now confess your sin to the Lord the God of your ancestors, and do what he demands. So our relationship, confess what we are doing wrong, confess our sin, and then do what he demands. Separate yourselves from the people of the land and from these pagan women. And so there were a lot of divorces and there, you know, there were children involved. And it seems to us, you know, to be like, we might look at this and say, whoa, you know, what, that, that's really rough. Uh, but these people of Israel were that close to losing their nation because they were mixing it with other people. And they were, they were told by God to stay separate so that um, Jesus Christ could come through their family and their nation. So there was a list of people who were involved in the sin and they were making things correct and right. And that's how we end the book of Ezra. First Corinthians chapter six, one through 20. And then he talks about 
he basically the father in the family and he's talking about family matters and he said if you have a problem with one of your brothers don't take it to an unjust judge an unbeliever and isn't there anyone in all the church who is wise enough to decide these issues but instead one believer sues another right in front of unbelievers and i guess that can um, also involve and include maybe I maybe somebody has a problem with a fellow Christian and then tells somebody who is not a believer. Um, and he said, why not just accept the injustice and leave it at that? You know, don't take our, you know, don't take the believers dirty laundry and hang it out for everyone to see. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. You look at the list and you think, well, yeah, I understand homosexuality, but people who cheat other people are in the same list. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he says to the people in Corinthians, some of you were once like that. Now, homosexuality is, in, is included in this. Sexual immorality, prostitutes, this is included in the people who were part of the Corinthian church. So there is redemption for, for people who indulge in these sins. And there's freedom from this sin. Uh, you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So our relationship is call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone anyone in this list, if they, if they do, and they did, there's a testimony that they did call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power of the spirit of God, they were made right with God and they were cleansed. You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I am allowed to do anything, quote unquote, I must not become a slave to anything. There's another scripture that says, whatever sin you follow, that you've become a slave to. And he said, food was made for the stomach and stomach for the food. This is true, though someday God will do away with both of them. I think that answers my husband's question. Are we going to be eating in heaven? I'm not sure. But you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. So our bodies were made to eat food in balance, but they were not made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord, and the Lord cares about our bodies. He cares about it, and God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead, and that is in, in the body. Our bodies are going to be raised from the dead. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ when you become a believer? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. So understanding that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So whenever we join ourselves to something unholy, uh, sexual immorality, or even things that we see with our eyes or our ears, and we participate in this body, we are making Christ, our spirit, and the Holy Spirit participate in the same thing. No wonder our spirits, our Holy Spirit is quenched in our spirits. And uh, he said, don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? That was the whole purpose for marriage, for two people to become one, two into one. And uh, man was one and became two. And marriage to become one again. For the scriptures say, and this is in Genesis in the beginning, the two are united into one. And that is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. That is the whole purpose of marriage for two people to become one 
And the, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So we become one with the Lord when we say yes to his proposal of being saved and being uh, made right with him and being with him and him with us. When his Holy Spirit comes into our spirit and joins, the two spirits become one spirit inside of us. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price. What price was that? It was the price of his body, his own life. And uh, the father gave his son. So you must honor God with your body. So we are bought with a price and we are priceless. And that is our value. So remember to honor God with your body in all that you do. Psalms chapter 31 verses 9 through 18. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. And it describes all of the, the feelings that he is feeling and the things that he's going through his body is wasting away sin has drained in my strength i am wasting away from within god wants us to stay away from sin because it is so damaging to us but i am trusting you O lord saying you are my god this is verse 14 this is our relationship and he says my future is in your hands rescue me from those who hunt me down re relentlessly. Let your favor shine on your servant. In your unfailing love, rescue me. Don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I call out to you for help. And, and God says, call on me and I will help you. Come to me, I will, find, I will give you rest. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 3. The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices. So you can be a millionaire and give the church or God in some way, maybe build a, a shrine for him. And he would be much more honored and much more pleased if you just do what's right and do what's just because he is just. I want you to share these videos so God's word may be heard and have an absolutely blessed day.